So as we continue on episode 319, first responders are also victims. This is, as I said, a new podcast. We're trying out some new audio functions. We'll, if you're on the uh, video portion, we'll show you a little bit about what we're doing in, in a few. If you're looking for firearms training in the Tampa Bay area, look no further. You can contact us at RaiderCopTACTAC.com. That's RaiderCopTACTAC.com. For more information on us, you can click on that uh, website and uh, our information will pop up. We teach revolver, pistol, shotgun, you name it, we teach it. You can contact us at Area code 813-942-7400. Or you can reach us at Raider Cop TAC. That's T-A-C. At Proton. P-R-O-T-O-N dot me. M-E. That's a lot of uh, alphabet there. But I'm sure you can remember. Now, um... The issue that we have in front of us today is multiple hurricanes, disasters are hitting left and right all over the United States, mostly in the southern half of the United States, or better known as the red states. President Joe Biden recently was asked What's going on with the victims or the people that are suffering tragedy as a result of this hurricane? And he said, which, which, uh, which hurricane? Which is scaring itself. And um, he said, oh, I was wondering which one you were talking about. Apparently, he's waiting more than one. But not to uh, say that there isn't more on the way. So it's a very confusing time and, you know, our hearts go out to those individuals that got flooded and had tragedy knock on their door while our government completely forgets who they are. We give billions of dollars to foreign countries all around the world for whatever reason that we're doing it, but when tragedy hits home, we are sending out $750 loans to victims, just like they did in Hawaii when they had to fire in Hawaii. $750. That's it, folks. That's all you're worth. It's sad. I hope you're getting angry, and that anger will be taken out at the ballot box on November 5th. So we can get these clowns out of the circus and long gone. You know, it is tiring. What we're talking about today, and we're just going to cut straight to the chase before we uh, go into the main event, is the people that had this hurricane happen to them, they had to wonder like everybody else, is it going to hit where I am? I have never seen the media weather forecaster as horrible and as bad as it is in current times. The spaghetti nonsense on the screen, it's a lot. It's a lot to digest. Many years ago, I think the weather casters were better. But now we have the European model, the Canadian model, the Fiji model, the Moon model, the Mars model, the Martian model. And it's very confusing. Because with all these models, not to mention AI, we have no idea where the hell it's going to land. We're getting mixed messages consistently. It's a two, it's a three, it's a four, it's a one, it's a zero, it's a tropical storm, it's a high wind. You, you can't make it up. 
And since it's so disturbing and confusing, it makes it more chaotic. You know, I, one of my duties in my law enforcement for profession that I've retired from, I was assigned to the emergency operations center. And it was a high tech area. And the Air Force planes or uh, NORA planes would go into the storm and the information would get downloaded and sent to um, the necessary authorities, mostly at the operations center was the Coast Guard. And there was somewhat of a great idea which way that thing was traveling. What they did do wisely back in the emergency operations center was to develop the cone of error. And it wasn't that they were fudging the truth, it was they weren't sure themselves if the hurricane would tilt left, right, what direction it would go. And you wanted people to get prepared. Today, and as of this podcast, there's a new hurricane forming off the coast of Mexico. Well, it's going to be confusing to you. By the time you hear this podcast, the hurricane would have been landed, which is going to be on the 8th of October. So I'm actually recording it prior, mostly because I'm in direct facing the supposed frontal attack of this hurricane into the Tampa Bay area. But the cone of error is 326 miles long. Ladies and gentlemen, we've lost our marbles. The entire state of Florida on the West Coast is covered in this cone. Why didn't they just say we don't know? But they don't. So I don't have a prediction, but I do know enough, I have enough experience to know that the cone is a little bit too large at 326 miles. We need to tighten that up a bit. An example of that, this last hurricane that passed Tampa Bay and they were screaming about save yourselves. There was a lot of water, don't get me wrong. But as far as hurricane winds, we were over around 130, 140 miles away from the eye of the storm. So we felt a little bit of the hurricane. I'm not trying to downplay it. But the original forecast, it was as if it was gonna fly over your head. Never seen uh, broadcasting this bad. But nevertheless, that's all we have. So you need to be prepared, you need to be wise, you need to be smart, you need to have your provisions in case there's destruction. We're only a catastrophe away. So a lot of people have been victims of this last hurricane and a lot of Individuals have lost their lives. The government has been very confusing. This is the term I'll use. I'm not going to say they're doing anything wrong because Facebook police doesn't like that. But I will say they've been very confusing. They're flying military flights to save people in North Carolina, but nobody seems to see any military aircraft. I'm just reporting what people are saying. I don't know, I'm not there. <clears throat> and there's no money. Secretary Mayorkas said there's no money. Joe Biden, the 46th president 
stooge of the United States said, there's no money. But then we've discovered that, hold on a minute, Congress sent uh, a couple of billion dollars not too long ago. What do you mean there's no money? And uh, now there's congressional hearings, which really translates into nothing's going to happen. Sounds good, though. And the Congress is going to get to the bottom of what's going on here. All I know is it's becoming more and more confusing for American citizens. This podcast is just to let you know, it's a small one, it's a brief one. It's just to let you know one thing. First responders are also hurricane victims. You see, they don't have super sonic hero abilities not to be affected. They don't wear capes. They don't fly like Superman. And if your neighbor is underwater, most likely the law enforcement neighbor most likely has the same thing. The only difference is that law enforcement guy is going to go out and go to work because he's essential or she's essential. I don't want to upset anyone. But the average citizen that's not essential can stay home or bunker down or escape the area. This podcast, number 319, is to let you know that these brave first responders, male and female, all around these areas that are being affected are also going through the same tragedies. I remember Hurricane Andrew and when it hit Miami in the area of Homestead back in 93, I believe it was, August of 93. It was horrifying. It looked like a nuclear bomb had gotten off. Homes were devastated. Work schedules for first responders would go into four, five, and six months of 12-hour shifts with no days off. Many first responders lost homes and everything else. But they bravely had to go to work. This is no different. And future disasters are no different either. I just wanted to pause and remind you guys of these facts. It's important. You know how we like to say, thank you for your service. You probably don't really mean it. But for those that do, it's important to remember that when you see Wally the weatherman confusing everybody with the spaghetti models, at the end of the day, there are brave men and women that had to put on uniforms, become essential, and go to work. And regardless of the tragedy that they leave behind in their homes with their families, they have to serve the community. And that cannot be forgotten. There's a lot of brave people that serve, but a lot do not get recognized as they should. It's disgraceful that our federal government is stabbering, falling, babbling to figure out what's going on and how to respond. From seaports that are upside down to airports, to planes that take hours and hours to take off, to supermarkets that don't have merchandise because our transportation system is upside down all of a sudden. We live in a chaotic, crazy world 
that our current government has created. Now, I know when I say the current government, I could face sanctions by the fake book police or the YouTube police, and they can bring down my stuff. But it's true. You know it, and I know it. So the, there are theories out there that these are hurricanes are man-made and blah, blah, blah. I don't believe so. The only one that can create this power is the Almighty himself. There's nobody else that can emulate it or make the wind blow at a three and a four category. No, it's only God. When you see things like this, we don't understand them, but we know that we have to be protected of them. So I don't believe in that conspiracy theory. At least I've never seen any evidence of it, so that's why I can't sign up for that. Um, I can tell you, Scripture doesn't tell me about any of that, so that's why I'm not really signing up, I guess. But what I can tell you is God is real, and he has the ability to turn it, stop it, or let it happen. We have to stay focused, put our head on the swivel, protect your family, look out for each other, believe in a higher power, and pray. Most importantly, for our government. Is it really our government? Or are they the rulers over us? Are we the smellies all of a sudden? We'll never know. But anyway, that's my two cents on this podcast. It's episode 319. And I wanted to bring to you, I wanted to focus with you the facts that first responders are also victims. Keep them in your thoughts. Keep them in your prayers. And when you really see them, Maybe say thank you. Remember, it's a free country. You don't have to. You don't have to be nasty either. As always, continue to pray for yourself because without you, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. My name is Alpha Mike, and you have been listening to Radar Cop Podcast, episode 319. I'll see you downrange.